I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you joined us this week. It's going to be a cloudy show today. Now, I'm not talking about the weather outside. Actually, as I record this on a Saturday, it's very pretty and blue, and the sky is all nice and got little fluffy clouds. It's a great day day to be in technology. Speaking of technology, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on techpodcast.com, drbill.cc, drbill.tv, and all the other names that we go by. <laughs> I'll answer it to hey you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't proud. Anyway, I have my phone with me this week that is being my tablet. Um, it's a long story. <laughs> Let's just say that here in my office at home, I am bandwidth challenged. <laughs> I have a 20 meg download, which a lot of you would say, dude, that's great. But I've got a 700 and some K upload. That's just wimpy. K now, not Meg. K. So, I'm uploading files, and that means that my whole network is strangled. So I'm having to use my 3G phone to get to my website to find out what we're going to talk about. Because when I try to go to the web, it just says no. <laughs> See, that's why everyone needs 30 Meg symmetrical connections to the interwebs because then life would be good. Actually, I'd take a 100 meg or 100 gig connection if I could get one. And I'd use it all, too. <laughs> anyway, first item this week is SkyDrive will be in Windows 8. Now, there's a reason for this. And the reason is called Apple. <laughs> yes, you say, what does that have to do with Windows 8? you would be surprised. What it is, is the new version of Mountain Lion, which is OS 10, OS X, depending on how you look at it, uh, version of Apple will have iCloud included. Don't you love that name? iCloud. iCloud, you cloud, we all cloud. Anyway, say it. Um, but so Microsoft said, well, we're going to put SkyDrive in our Windows 8. So Microsoft, once again, is playing catch up. Yes, they are. <laughs> you know, after all, Bill Gates took the idea from Steve Jobs to do all the icons on the screen. And of course, Steve Jobs got it from Xerox. Well, Stevie is anybody coming up with any original boys, ideas? And and Just saying. Was looking, anyway, next item. Up. After six years, a new version of Apache Web Server. Now, this is interesting, and it's a testament, I think, to the fact that Apache as a web server, it's kind of the web server of the entire interwebs, um, is that solid. Really, that they haven't even had an update in six years. That's pretty good. But it's an open source project, as you well know, which is another reason it's so solid. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they released 2.4 of their web server. And it's got lots of cool new features, which is awesome. And it's a great web server. I like it. I use it myself. The whole netcast that you see or at least the website, drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C for computer curmudgeon, as you well know, is delivered via Apache. Dude. So it's good stuff. 
Also, next item, Ubuntu for Android has been demoed by Kenanical. Kenanical. I've always had a problem with that word. I don't know why. I don't have a problem with Canon. Canon, that makes sense. Canon makes good cameras. Matter of fact, the, can the camera I'm using right here, right now, is a Canon camera. So I don't have any problems with the word Canon. But when you add the ick go on the, in the, in the, the end of it, my tongue just gets all twisted around. <laughs> As you see, Canon, Canonical. Just can't say it, so I won't try anymore. Anyway, point is, they demoed their Ubuntu for Android. Now, this phone is an Android phone. That means you could run Linux right here on this phone. Dude. I'm not sure why you'd want to right offhand, but that's okay. <laughs> no, the whole idea is they're using their Unity interface. Get it? Unity interface to unify all the platforms into one. Okay. I mean, it's okay, really. I, I like it, but I just don't know. There's just, there's just too many competition. Well, I mean, I like competition. Don't get me wrong. But it just seems like everybody's trying to come up with the unified field theory of interfaces. <sighs> just let me have my interface. I like my interfaces. Okay. Next item. Tech jobs for Linux. Heat up. That's good. Now, here's the thing. I like my job. I like my current job. It's just primo for me. You know what I'm saying? And that is system administrator at a large local hospital where I get to administrate Citrix, uh, VMware, and Red Hat Linux. See, there's Tux, and there's the Red Hat logo on the hat. Yes. So, and of course, the angry bird and the pig. I like that. Anyway, so the whole thing is, is that tech jobs for Linux are exploding in a good way. So you can get a job as a Linux tech if you are a Linux tech. If you're not, eh, jobs are still a little on the short side if you're not into the right technology. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. My phone just blanked out on me because I was not playing with it correctly. Sometimes you gotta kinda, you know, move your finger on the screen just to keep it alive. I'm not gonna say anything about that. Anyway, the point is that Linux is awesome. I'm a Linux dude through and through. I mean, I was on the interwebs reading the Usenet news groups when Linus, Linus Thorvalds first posted his email said, hey guys, I'm gonna create a new uh, operating system based on Minix. And I was like, cool. So when he posted the first one, I downloaded it and started playing with it. And I've been using Linux ever since. That was 1992. Yes. My son was born in 1992. So he's as old as Linux. It's kind of odd to think about, actually. But anyway, as, as a matter of fact, the Game Master, my son, says, Benjamin is his real name, but he, you know, he goes by Game Master ZX on the interwebs. Anyway, the point is, <sighs> boy, I'm digressing. The point is, he told me, he says, everything really exciting happened in 1992. Yes, the invention of the World Wide Web by Sir... Uh, <laughs> I just thought of Linus Thorvalds and I now forget Tim Berners-Lee, but I remembered. Tim Berners-Lee is the guy who first proposed the web and hyperlinking as a master's thesis in 1992. So, now the internet was around well before that. It went back to the 60s. That's why I could be on the Usenet news groups, you know, in 1992, but that was prior to the webishness. Yes. So, and by 1995, 1996 time frame, I was already doing websites. Yes. So, cutting edge kind of dude. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yes. We have the great...
sponsor this week, which is, of course, Citrix Systems. I'm really down with Citrix Systems, obviously, <laughs> being a Citrix admin. But they also have a great technology in GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Now, this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio here <laughs> on the netcast and you can actually have a conversation with folks using uh, you know obviously um, the 16 by 9 ratio on your webcam your webcam has to support it you know what I'm saying so you have to have a really good HD quality webcam but once you all do you can communicate in 16 by 9 that's so awesome it's clear and it's crisp and it's nice and you can share desktops and you can share information and just have a whole meeting in glorious HD through GoToMeeting with HD Faces. So, a 30-day free trial can be yours if you go to the special Bitly URL right here. Yes, love the Bitly. The point is, it's also a link in my blog show notes for this netcast. So you can go click on it there and be assured that you are getting the great deal on Citrix GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Awesome. All right, next item that we want to talk about. Oh, this is a, oh, oh, this, this, you gotta make note of this. Get a pencil. I don't have a pencil, but you can get one. <laughs> And you can write it down. Which, if I don't write things down, they tend to go floating away in my mind. Yes. Anyway, VLC. You've heard me talk about VLC before. VLC is awesome. Dude, I'm talking awesome. And version 2 is out. Now, they've been version 1. Dot whatever for a long time. You know, it's an open source project. They take their time and they develop it. It's like a fine wine. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> I made that up. Anyway, the point is version 2 is out and it has tons of new features. I mean, let me increase the size of the screen so I can possibly read them because it's such a tiny little screen. Uh, they've rewritten the video output cord modules allowing sub-picture blending in the GPU. Yes. They have shader support in the OpenGL output. They have new video outputs for Windows 7, Android, iOS, and OS2. OS2? Who cares about OS2 anymore? Never mind. New depending grain denoising and anti-flickering filters. Love it. New deinterlacing filter including an inverse telecine algorithm. Audio, new resamplers for higher quality audio. I'm all for the higher quality audio. And on and on and on. New formats, multi-threaded decoding for H.264, MPEG-4, XVID, and WebM. WebM! Okay, support for 10-bit codecs, and on and on and on. Input and devices, experimental support for Blu-ray discs. Um, Mac users, completely new single window interface. For anime fans, I mean, they have something for anime fans. Vastly improved MKV Muxer. You anime guys are going, what? But it's there. For professional users, support for profiles. ProRes, not profiles. It's hard to read this type. It's so small, let me blow it up a little bit more. That's the thing about the little pinchy thing, you know, where you can and make it be. Never mind. Support for ProRes. 422 and 4444. <laughs> I don't know what all this means. Anyway, it's got lots of support. And for developers, it has Live VLC, Live VL Core, and Live Compat have switched from GPL um, to LGPL V21 Plus. <sighs> and more stuff. It's also technical. And I like technical, don't get me wrong. But, you know, sometimes you just don't know what in the world they're talking about. <laughs> but I can tell you this, VLC is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And you need to upgrade now. So go do it. Write a note to yourself. Remember to upgrade. See, that's the thing that bugs me. Let me just 
digress a moment here. That's the thing that bugs me about PC users in general. They don't upgrade often enough. <laughs> you can say, if it works, why fool with it? Well, because it's fun to upgrade, dude. Upgrade your VLC, upgrade your LibreOffice, upgrade all your stuff so that you're current and get all the good new features. Otherwise, you're sitting there being old and fuddy-duddy. So, don't be one of them guys. So anyway, whoa! Well, the Geek Software of the Week waited at least until I finished my rant, and then it interrupted me. Geek Software of the Week. <laughs> my phone cut off right as I was starting to talk about it, and that confused me greatly. Geek Software of the Week this week is Cloudberry Explorer. Now, this is the freeware version that's the Geek Software of the Week this week. They have a pro version for $39.99 that is awesome. But so is the freeware version. And I know a lot of you are saying, another Amazon S3 Explorer? Dr. Bill, what's up with that? Well, you know, I'm moving all my video to the cloud. I'm a cloudy kind of guy. I told you it was going to be a cloudy netcast. Anyway, so I'm moving stuff to the cloud. And in order to do it properly, moving it particularly from one server to another server, you got to have the right software. And Cloudberry Explorer, believe me, is the coolest one. I like it a lot. They have a freeware version for Windows XP and Windows 7. Now, they don't have one yet for Linux. Give them time. Maybe they'll develop it. Eh, but... So it goes. Uh, actually, I already told you about Dragon Disk. By the way, and oh yes, for you Linux folk that are looking for yet another ver new version of Dragon Disk, the author sent me an email just this week and said two weeks, two weeks, new version of Dragon Disk. So hang in there. I'll tell you about that when it gets here. But like I said, I'm just I'm really into the cloud these days, as you can tell. The other thing is. By the way, you need to download it. I have the link here for Cloudberry Explorer. It's in there. So you can go to this link, or you can look it up on the blog. I point to my phone, but you know, like the blog is just on my phone. No, it's out there on the web, and on the phone, and on the tablet. Except the tablet isn't displaying right now because my internet connection sucks. <laughs> I want 30 symmetrical. I'm thinking about bribing North State, calling them up and say, hey, dude, would you consider a bribe to run your fiber optic out here to my house? I know I'm in the country, but I'm only seven miles out of the center of town. Seven miles, that's five with two more, seven. <laughs> you know, math and I, we're just kind of passing acquaintances. Anyway, the point is, I need more bandwidth. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be a geek, you gotta have the bandwidth. It's bandwidth, by the way. It's like breathing air. You got to have air. Well, I've got to have bandwidth. So, so anyway, I don't know. Probably if I called up North State and told them I needed to bribe them to run their fiber optic, they'd go, "Yeah, right." By the way, toward that end. A buddy of mine at work says he lives in Archdale. Now, Archdale's further out than I am. Come on, dudes. I even have a high point address. He's got an Archdale address. What's up with that? Anyway, so he told me that they're out in his neighborhood right now digging ditches to lay the fiber optic to run down into his neighborhood with the new Plex 30 symmetrical available system. Dude. And they're using shovels. I mean, guys are just out there with shovels. What's up with that? I mean, have you ever heard of a ditch witch? I have, and I don't even dig ditches. Believe me, I don't dig ditches. Anyway, the point is, he was telling me all about that, and I was like, dude, I was, I was, <laughs> I almost moved to Archdale. I came close. I don't know why they get it before we do. We're in High Point. We're just seven miles out. Eh, give him time. I know. Be patient. 
I need patience to name it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last item, official item, is LibreOffice has brought out a new version, 3.5. Dude, 3.5. That's a major, you know, like, version level. And it's awesome. And it's so awesome. <laughs> awesome is the word of the week. <laughs> the point is... You need to upgrade LibreOffice right now. And if you're saying, well, Doc, you know, I just use OpenOffice. What? What? You should be using LibreOffice. They are the document foundation. They are the true bearers of the openness of the open source. They're not beholden to any of those corporate evil entities. Yes. <sighs> I'm in a weird mood this week. But what are you going to do? Anyway, also, keep this in mind, I'm doing this obviously on a Saturday morning. I mentioned that earlier, that it's a Saturday morning for me as I record this. Here's the date. Yes, as I record this. But I'm going to be on the Saturday Morning Tech Show, uh, which airs on Saturday morning. And you say, but Dr. Bill, you're recording this on a Saturday morning, and you're saying this is coming up later. Yes, but it's... Pacific time. Todd Cochran lives in Hawaii. Not all of us can live in Hawaii, <laughs> but he does. So it's on his time. So 11 o'clock Pacific time. Almost said specific time. It's specifically. Sp now I'm really tongue tied. I can't say it. Pacific time. 11 o'clock Eastern. I'm Eastern Time, 11 o'clock my time. Are you as confused as I am anyway? So that's when the Saturday Morning Tech Show will be on. And I will be a guest as well as Rob Greenlee from Microsoft. Cool. So join us on that. And if you can't get catch it live on the old Ustream, then you can also Get it later on uh, the Saturday Morning Tech Show feed from techpodcast.com. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here. I already said that. Anyway, just saying. So, cool stuff is happening. By the way, those of you that are still with me that haven't gone to sleep, <laughs> pay attention. You need to go to vertzine, V I R. T-Z-I-N-E.com. I'll put it right here on the screen. Go there because I have a demo this week. Oh, dude. Awesome software. Unbelievably cool software. Open source. Web-based desktop. Virtual desktop. Open source. How much more can I say? It gets me so excited. The dude who initially conceived and wrote Mandrake Linux, wrote this with a buddy of his, and they released it to the wild, the wild world of the internet, and I downloaded it and tried it, and dude, I'm, I'm completely blown away as a Citrix engineer. This stuff looks awesome to be open source. We're talking free. Go check it out. Go watch the netcast. It's only like 20 minutes long, but it's a great demo. It's actually between you and me. It's actually one of the best demos I've ever done. Just say it. So, check it out. Really, and tell your friends. Tell them to tune in to vertzine.com and watch it. And also, of course, drbill.cc and, of course, the handheld hack and all the other cool things that we do here at drbillbailey.net. Yes. Okay, it was a commercial. Eh. Meanwhile, join us next time. <laughs> and remember until then that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.